The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another webinar. It's nice to see some uh, some frequent attendees on uh, on our sessions. My name is Bruno. Probably you'll know me if you attended before. Uh, today we'll have a special guest as well, a specialist on the, on this topic. He will guide you throughout most of the presentation, and uh, we hope that it's going to be informative enough, and that you can answer all your questions, that you can clarify some of the doubts that you have, and uh, in case that you might need some more information. You always know how to, how to reach us and it's very easy. The emails are going to be shared. So it's quite uh, easy to get in touch with us. I hope all is well. Uh, I would just like to ask a first question to our, our attendants. Uh, where are you logging in from? Just uh, type it out in the chat so we have just a, a better idea who we are speaking to and uh, what are your um, expectations for these kind of sessions. So you can uh, try to address some of those. Nice to see you all. In about uh, two or three minutes, we'll start. We see some people that are just joining now. All right, so welcome to another webinar hosted by Hero Raven Academy. This is part of a series in which we talk about how we can tackle some of today's most challenging problems. And previously, if you logged in before, if this is your first time, but previously we talked about having installation solutions how to protect your installations from corrosion, and then how to combine those two topics to design reliable weather exposed fixing systems, such as ones found in rooftops and outdoors in general. The last webinar we did was actually on the topic of rooftop installations, how to design efficient solutions for this uh, um, equipment and all the ducts, all the cable trays you might find outside in rooftops typically, and how we can solve that issue. We can work with you to create better fixing systems for this. Uh, today's topic is also a continuation of uh, all of this uh, safety and efficiency and MEP installations uh, trend that we've been uh, progressing from, uh, from early in the year. And this time we're gonna focus on a key aspect of proper engineering buildings, seismic protection. In this webinar, we'll talk about how earthquakes affect all building systems and why it's crucial to extend the design to the non-structural components. You can visit our social media pages to access recordings of our previous sessions. You can then refresh your knowledge or you can learn something new. And for more information, as always, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So now I will just uh, give you a quick introduction on uh, what's going to, to happen today, what we did, did we plan for the session, who we are as well. And uh, for you today, we have a, a duration of about 45 minutes. So from 3 to 3.45 approximately. Of course, if need be, we'll just uh, use a little bit more time to explain a bit more in detail some of the, the concepts we're going to, to talk today. Uh, then we'll have, after that, a question and answer duration of 15 minutes or 15, 20, 25, depending on how many questions we, we are getting from you and uh, how much time it will take to answer all of them. We always try to answer all the questions we get from, from the audience, and this time will not be different. So if you have questions, you can always type them out in the in the chat box or in the questions box, box, and then later on, we'll get to each and every one of them. So the content we planned for today, we'll start with a quick introduction on our, our company, so who we are. We'll then move to why it's important to consider the seismic activity, the effect that it has on MEP systems, what kind of bracing systems are there and that we can offer. And then we can uh, help you design to account for this effect and these forces, the design methodology to create solutions for that, and we'll give some application examples. So to start uh, with who we are, first of all, uh, let me just talk a little bit about the Hero Warrior Event Academy. If you've been uh, following, you already have an idea of what it is. If it's the first time for you, I'll explain this is a concept we launched early in the year to educate and to try to train not only our, our own people, but always also the, the, our partners, uh, the industry partners we work with, the contractors, the consultants, the, the clients, the developers, everything, about some of these highly technical topics and uh, some of the challenges that we face today in our, in our world and what we can do to counter that. 
Uh, to sum it up, we just prepared a quick video. I'll just play it out for you. So thank you for staying with me. Of course, the Academy, it's not only our training sessions and webinars such as this, also seminars, also coaching on site. It's uh, everything that encompasses the technical knowledge that we have and we want to share. So you see in the video part of what we do as part of the engineering uh, support services that we have. This is also part of what we call Hero Eleven Academy. So Hero Eleven, uh, we are a successful joint venture from two companies, Hero or Even, um, based, uh, that came from a company uh, based in the UAE, which is Hira Industries and Hira Group. And then in 2015, created a joint venture with War Even Group based in the Netherlands to form a much more uh, efficient company and let's say company that can uh, answer more, more problems and more complex problems. So this is how we came to be. And just to give you a highlight of what here in the CZ, this is a company founded in 1980 with sales companies and manufacturing units in multiple locations across IMEA, so Asia and USA all the way, and uh, currently employs more than 1,100 employees for, um, from more than 20 plus nationalities. Or even itself originated from the metalwork company Javan Valhavan in 1942, uh, has currently production sales companies in more than 15 countries, over 1,000 employees, and it's a very innovative company with more than 60 patents and counting. So we have a global presence and we are highly specialized in this kind of field in the, the MEP application industry. Not only that, of course, but this is the core of our expertise. And uh, we've been tackling all the issues that has uh, been uh, showing up and has been developing since the 1940s. So this is how we can help you with all of this knowledge and all of this uh, development, all of this technology, all of this uh, expertise. This is where we can help on every kind of project you have and every kind of problem you have. We can be there to help you solve it. Here we have a a glance. Uh, we have manufacturing plants in UAE and India, sales companies across the region. We are uh, a manufacturing supplier of complete fixing system solutions from simple pipe support to variation control and seismic. Uh, part of what how we guide our work is quality. We are ISO certified. We are RAL specified and MSS member, and we design solutions to meet the most demanding quality standards, such as FM, UL, VDS, ETA, and of course, RAL, which is uh, a framework of pipe support quality as well. We offer a vast range of solutions, such as certified installation systems, like pipe support, uh, channel and rail systems, rooftop supports, as I discussed last time, vibration isolators, and of course, seismic, which is going to be the focus of today and high performance mechanical and chemical anchors for seismic and non-seismic applications. So how do we help you? We market and brand all of our products under the name Diamond or Raven. And to round it off, we offer anchor design services. We do field testing, both to comply, uh, to, to, comp to prove our performance as well as to check the situation at site if the subject has uh, enough strength or enough reliability to actually support what's needed to be. Uh, we do customized and tailored solutions, and we help you throughout the whole process of seismic design, which can be sometimes cumbersome, and uh, there's a lot of steps, and we can help you throughout the process and guide you with everything that needs to be done. So we have decades of experience, such as 
landmark buildings across the world, transportation networks as metros, railways, uh, roads as well, tunnels, all of these uh, kinds of special solutions projects we have worked on and we have several solutions tailored for those. High-rise buildings which uh, present also a lot of uh, issues, especially on the dynamic part, so of course seismic not only, but side vibration, wind, all of these things we have uh, studied and designed and we have uh, been working uh, since a long time, since decades now, and we are uh, specializing in these kind of uh, solutions. And of course, mega developments, iconic developments, such as the Expo, which we um, we are eager to see next year. Unfortunately, it was not possible this year, but uh, we are almost turning the page and uh, hopefully next year will be much more positive for everything. And we hope that Expo will be a part of that. So our values, uh, which it's something that guides us as well, and I'll just show this to you so you will always be a part of that. So Think Smart is something that we value very much. Uh, this is, of course, part of thinking out of the box and creative mind to find better solutions and more efficient solutions for your projects and your problems at site. Fair play and transparency, it's something that guides us so we don't, uh, we are not cheaters. We We'll, we want to respect and be respected as well. And most of all, we are honest and open. For every situation, we uh, do not try to, we do not hide any, we are transparent with, with our industry partners, our clients, uh, whoever we work with. This is something that guides us as a company from inside and outside. Open communication is of course a part of transparency. So the freedom, the flexibility and the being approachable, uh, this is uh, what guides us as well. Be accountable, of course, uh, being reliable and being trustworthy. This is uh, a mark and the mark of quality from our company. And this is how we position ourselves in the market. And of course, to challenge ourselves to be unique and to be innovative and to never give up. This is our core values that guides us as a company and as people that work for this company. And ultimately, the way that we better serve you as a client, as a contractor, as a consultant, as a developer, as a, as a partner. So um, about today's presenter, um, today's presenter is um, engineer Haris Kureshi. He's a senior technical engineer speci specialized in seismic and vibration control, has more than six years of experience in the construction industry, especially in the construction services industry, com companies uh, such as Hero or Raven. He has a vast experience on this kind of solution, so he knows very well how to navigate all of these situations, all of these issues. He has more than three years leading seismic technical departments, he specializes in seismic and vibration control systems, and his background is in mechanical engineering. So he's the right person to address for all of the situations, and he can guide you for everything. That is, please. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Bruno, for my introduction. So our today topic is about seismic and vibration control system, mainly the seismic restraint system for this all MEP and HVAC firefighting all system. So now, so as for the contents like importance of considering the seismic activity would be our first topic to discuss this uh, se seismic importance and what is earthquake, just kind of introduction for the earthquake. So let's start with this introduction. As you all know about this, earthquakes are unavoidable and it could occur like uh, any day, any time and we never knows about the earthquake and we cannot even forecast. We can just like based on some estimation, we can like design some construction or design some of our, uh, from engineering point of view, we can design the system only. So, and this uh, earthquake, it has uh, like, uh, we have some contribution of this uh, earthquake, which I can show you here. In 2019, you can see this over 1,600 events were there and this with a magnitude of 5.0 M. And uh, higher registered also, but uh, but several events with 7.0 M. So this is the very, like you can say, it's very huge impact as per this data. And the overall this uh, earthquake impact is like around the, for the economical point of view, it's, it's has 365 billion dollars. It's like, which is, which is, which, which was recorded in 2011 and uh, half of the more than half of this value is from Tokyo disaster in Japan. So events 
occur all over the world including the middle east and as you all know that we are working in middle east so this market and this uh, all design consideration for the seismic seismic or earthquake point of view needs to be considered very well while designing our system this in the when we talk about specifically for middle east it has some data also which showing some some events and some this uh, how the region is changing so and seismic events seismic events are getting more severe with the when we are comparing this data since last couple of years so this seismic events are also in this region are frequent and this uh, one of the you can say it's is getting more active in the regional point of view more that more than 700 events were recorded in last 365 days and majority is why above 5.0 m seismic map is constantly changing and uh, this it's and it's like things are getting changed so we need to be more proactive while designing any system so that is why seismic design is must for any any MEB system or any non-structural system design here we have some introduction for the earthquake how it is arrived what is earthquake earthquake is basically like uh, movement or the sudden changes in the plates in the soil and uh, because of those changes it has it it released some energy on the surface of the earth that's why we are feeling some earthquake here we have two technical things like hypocenter the point of origin where uh, earthquake is originate as you can see in this picture and the epicenter is a reflection of all these energy on the earth surface so just uh, like uh, be on a like uh, more specific side this this is kind of like uh, better introduction for for our consideration for earthquake and then to understand the system overall so when we talk about earthquake then it obviously every every force it has intensity so earthquake also has some intensity and we have different scales to measure the earthquake intensity and uh, this as you can see here intensity is categorized by by different numbers and we have also this uh, Richter scale and then we have also Michele scale and Richter scale is used for the, this uh, to show the earthquake how intense it is and then for technically we have peak ground acceleration which is in terms of meter per second square that would be useful for our designing for, for our designing part then we have this da this data which is showing the magnitude intensity acceleration perceived shaking and potential damage this uh, magnitude from 1 to 9 we have in perceived shaking we have nothing but when you compare it with this uh, 5 to 5.9 which is you can say it's uh, it's it's a common one it's, it could be it could be happened so that's why perceived shaking is very strong and potential damage is moderate but it has and intensity is in, in its rate is 7 so this kind of data in different magnitudes or different like uh, different parameters we can consider this earthquake intensity to design or uh, to design any system for uh, earthquake protection and peak ground acceleration would play its major role while we are designing anything related to the non-structural then we have this uh, some map details which is based on this seismic force in terms of g and we have different this middle east middle east region it has uh, showing on the basis of different like uh, years different years span let's say 50 years span we have collected this data 0.75 g which is which is represented by blue color in this chart so it's it's basically the intensity of uh, seismic force intensity of seismic force is in terms of g and this is like in different regions it has different value based on different data collection in the means that in the air span so 50 years data showing some values and 100 year data 250 year data so different years data having showing different seismic forces based on different regions then for for specifically for in in terms of peak ground acceleration it has while we are discussing this region so we are here in united arab emirates and so we can see here in united arab emirates it has all this 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 to 3.4.0 0 .0, all categories lies in this this region and then all system needs to be designed accordingly so this is the like just general concept for the 
earthquake intensity and the peak ground acceleration uh, or intensity in terms of peak ground acceleration which is useful for our any seismic design so seismic design is not about just the seismicity it's all it's also based on the depends on the type of structure nature of occupancy in terms of technical language when, while we are speaking so nature of occupancy so we have to design different system in different nature of occupancy means if you are dealing with uh, firefighting or some uh, police station rescue station so you are dealing in more different way while you are dealing with some kind of stadiums and arenas and power plant and medical facility the, these are different like occup nature of occupancies and we have to design our system in different ways with respect to the nature of occupancy so as per this IBC table, we have four, as you all know about this, four table, four risk categories, which is one to four, and it starts from one and it's getting more severe to two, then third, then fourth. And all this one, two, three, four, it has different kind of uh, occupancies, which we will discuss in this uh, in this session also. Uh, what what kind of buildings are covered in this, uh, this one, two, and three, and four. So when we are dealing with, as you all know, that we are dealing with non-structural, non-structural equipment, non-structural services, and uh, when we are talking about the funds point of view, economic point of view, the major contribution was uh, for the non-structural parts in any building. So major investment was for is for uh, your non-structural, non-structural system. While we are comparing with the structural system, because we have HVAC system, MEV system, all services in each. Even MEV, it has a lot of uh, different services and the equipment cost. So everything, so majority is involved for the non-structural uh, items or components in all our uh, construction industry. So when we talk about uh, like uh, the investment point of view and costing point of view, so we have uh, majorly in out of this uh, in non-structural component system, we have in non-structural we have HV MEP which includes HVAC, electrical, life and safety, all. So while we are like it has some, it, this data is showing like we have major contributor was HVAC application along with the electrical in installation. For life life safety is playing its role, but the major contribution for the investment point of view for the costing point of view is HVAC and electrical system which covering the full range of all in HVAC you have like uh, different equipments different services electrical we have also different services means communication uh, earthing communication this emergency power cable trace so this is the full system so so major contributor all of this non-structural is HVAC and electrical while the importance like for seismic point of view is always lead to the life safety services but HVAC and electrical are the major contributor too. So as we have discussed just the introduction, values, costings, investments about the non-structural and earthquake introduction we have discussed. Now we are going to start this, how does this earthquake or this uh, all seismic events affect on so like uh, this MEP system? how these seismic forces can affect on MEV system. So in non-structural components, it has for the for the MEV, it has non-structural component. In non-structural components, we have different kind of mountings. We have uh, ceiling suspended. We have floor mounted. We have wall mounted as well. So it's basically we have different kind of reactions. We have different kind of effects because of that seismic event. So for the ceiling suspended services, it could be the collision between the pipes and sprinkler pipes hit building structure or other MEB system. So that, that would be the risk to like uh, for the destruction because of the collision of the pipe pipes, piping or any ceiling suspended services. This is specifically for the floor mounted system. While we are discussing, while we are like taking this uh, into account, this floor mounted, Floor mounted, it has also its own effect, kind of because of the earthquake movement. It is every equipment has its center of gravity, which is uh, like in the center of the equipment. And because of th that CG, the equipment could fall down because of any movement at the down at the basement. So there could be the overturning of there could be the risk or chance because of the earthquake for the over overturning of the floor mounted equipment. 
then fittings could be break due to twisting and this coupling this connections could be come out because of that uh, movement so we have different measures to take we have different measures to control this all seismic forces all these effects from mep system so majorly for the floor mounted system we have bracing which is like kind of different kind of bracing which we will discuss in detail in the session and then anchoring which is bracing for the mostly for the ceiling suspended system and the anchoring is for this uh, for floor mounted equipment wall mounted equipment wall mounted small panels battery panels all these kind of equipment which are directly fixed to the structure uh, on floor or on wall then flexibility could be is very important because uh, differential movement is expected because of this seismic movement and then flexibility we need to consider in our designs by using let's uh, for for an example like from ducts to equipment we have flexible duct connectors which is like uh, connecting the which is making the system more flexible so that also be the part of this system to avoid uh, any any kind of twisting or like breakage because of the movement we should have some flexibility and tolerance so clearance clearance it's like we are not considering we don't used to consider normally in the normal practices but clearance would be the like uh, could play it's 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 very important to consider the clearance during the design because if if like system piping things are closed with each other then there would be the chance there would be the risk to for the collision so if we have a more proper clearance then because of those movements we can control that collision during the during that event and in this load path engineering design design needs system needs to be designed very well and then product should be tested for the application means the whatever the application of the product it should be certified and tested for those applications then this is not the normal installation this is not the normal kind of uh, system which we are going to install so it's it's better to inspect after the installation and get it certified from the from the from the specialist so everything should be in in it would go smooth while like after confirming the installation as well so inspection is most important part after doing all these things so bracing we can we have different like uh, as i told you this bracing and anchoring so bracing we can use for the floor mounted service uh, ceiling suspended services pipes conduits the bus ducts cable trays ventilation units suspended equipment so it's basically bracing is used to control for the all services and equipment which are ceiling suspended from the from the ceiling which are which having the ceiling suspended mounting then anchorage anchoring is the is just for the panel boards floor mounted mainly for the floor mounted equipments while we are talking about the wall mounted we have panel board switch gears for floor mounted power generators air conditioner so that anchoring which, uh, shall be very important for this uh, seismic point of view for this and anchor should be seismically certified for this application so now after the effects on mvp system as you as uh, as i explained bracing is the most important part along with the anchoring because majorly we are dealing with the bracing and then anchoring is a part of it so seismic bracing system and now we will discuss about what kind of bracing systems we have and what kind of bracing system could be applicable to control this effect of seismic forces so initially we will start from rigid bracing system so rigid bracing system has its own uh, every system has its own uh, advantage and uh, limitations so rigid bracing system is it has different combination of different channels and different frameworks and with the, along with the different accessories and then we have flexible bracing system in flexible bracing system it has its own advantages then we will discuss it here but uh, this 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 the idea is same to control the to limit the movement rather than the prevent and can be it's, it's very easy to install can be li linked directly with the clamp can be linked directly with the pipe so no more accessories required and uh, each cable is uh, like having like each support required two kind of two cables with e having the equal distance and uh, these all cables having different load carrying capacity to control the seismic forces based on the different load requirement 
so now we are comparing here rigid bracing system with cable bracing system in rigid bracing system as you know this it has it is not flexible it has the kind of channel involved in the to brace the system so compression and tension both kind of uh, reactions are there but in cable bracing system only the tension force shall be shall be there for two for in the during the seismic event or the only in kind of in in terms of reaction so cable bracing system it has some advantages or benefits over the rigid bracing system and the wires which we are using its aircraft pre stretch wires which is specially designed this is not the normal wires these wires are specially designed for this application and uh, resist loads in tension 100% of the time so obviously then then it has the one of the best advantage of it this is that there is no uh, kl over uh, r limitation radius of gyration limitation uh, limitation are not there whatever the drop from the ceiling whatever the length of wire is required we can use it because if you are using some rigid or channels then it has because of the length there would be the changes in the reaction but in wires if you have a long drop or if you have a long length of wire then we can use it uh, without because it has no any kl over r radius of variation limitation so and it's easy to install it's because you can wrap around the pipe you can wrap around the surface and then clamp to the ceiling so while designing seismic restraint system it has few standards to be considered so i am just sharing you uh, sharing here some some major like main standards which we used to consider which includes international building codes international existing building codes american society of civil engineering nfpa and uniform building codes some projects required uh, following the this ubc and some projects following ibc so both have to consider based on the requirement and specification then seismic uh, restraints by ashray smacna nima and the other standards as well from asme so these are the standards which we used to consider for designing any seismic system and that needs to be considered for design any non structural seismic uh, system along with the like uh, compliance or this all specs the and the details so in bracing system we have different kind of bracing means lateral sway brace longitudinal sway brace and sway brace four way brace in lateral it is it is brace uh, perpendicular to the axis of the pipe its concept about the direction why it's lateral why it's longitudinal because of the direction so in lateral brace the wire having the direction along uh, perpendicular to the axis of the pipe perpendicular to the axis of the surface in longitudinal it is along to the uh, longitude it is along to the length of the pipe four way brace it has four way system which can be used uh, for the riser mainly to cover both longitudinal and transverse lateral transverse i mean here the lateral sway brace then lateral sway brace has its own way own its standards to consider the span and uh, longitudinal sway brace has its own Concede, uh, has its own uh, standards for the span and as you can see here it's after it can it could be applied on after, on every feed and cross main line for the piping and the uh, it could be used in majority is using is greater than 65 mm diameter of pipe and uh, it should be started from 1.8 meter from the end of the pipe and maximum allowed spacing is 12.2 meter for longitudinal uh, for transverse bracing lateral bracing now in longitudinal bracing it has the same system feed and cross it needs to be uh, braced and uh, it should be installed from the end of the pipe from 12, within 12 meter and then maximum allowed spacing is 24.4 meter between from from each support to another support it it is the maximum 24 and this 12.2 is a maximum but based on the load requirement if if there is more loads then we can install it we can use multiples but this is the 12.2 meter is the maximum span which we can consider riser has its own standards to consider uh, to consider for the bracing system so if the top of the riser exceeding 1 meter in length shall be provided so a brace and uh, can be done four way brace because it's more logical to use a four way brace in risers because of the it's vertical 
distance between sway brace for riser shall not exceed 7.6 meter so this is the riser as we have here this uh, for the horizontal running 12.2 and 24.4 in risers vertical we have like 7.6 we it, the support or span span should not be exceed from 7.6 meter sway bracing shall not be required where risers penetrated because risers sometimes they are penetrating through, through the ceiling through the structure and then it is already have some it has no chance for the movement so that that needs to be considered in the while designing of any riser bracing system so in seismic bracing system now we are we have done this seismic bracing system where we have discussed lateral sway rigid sorry rigid cable bracing system both and advantages of uh, cable bracing system over the rigid bracing system and then we have discussed different type of bracing lateral brace longitudinal brace sway brace and what is applicable what standard shall be applicable for horizontal run and what standard shall be applicable for the vertical risers now here we will discuss about design methodologies to design any system for the non structural so we have few important parameters needs to be considered for in order to design any seismic restraint system for non structural components initially we need to review and assess the project soil profile type and site class what site class it is what is project soil profile type it is which we can get easily from the soil reports of uh, any geotechnical reports from the projects then importance factors importance factor has its its major role to categorize the uh, surfaces with structural and non uh, with uh, life safety and non life safety and uh, building occupancy categories which we have just we just had some overview building occupancy categories now we will discuss in detail then seismic design category which has been the like design categories which is like uh, which has been designed based on soil profile type and some site coefficient parameters so based on that computation we have some values and that values we need to compare to match the seismic design category so let's start first from the soil profile type as you can see this from ibc asc this we have this different soil profile types and uh, this this a b it's it depends on the like shear velocity of the uh, soil particles and based on that will uh, particle velocity it is categorized in different uh, different site classes so a is a hard rock, rock and then b is the rock then c is the one which we are facing uh, like uh, mainly here peridone soil and soft rock so for any component if we have because in order to design any seismic restraint system we have to categorize the structural uh, this non structural parts in life safety and non life safety because that is that needs to be that, that is very important while making any seismic assessment because most of the projects requires they are considering the life safety so we need to check whether it's based on the soil profile type and seismic design category is it required for life safety and it's required for for all services so before going to that step we need to check which life safety services it is and what are the non life safety services and at how these services are categorized in terms of importance factor so here we have two kind of importance factor which is 1.0 and 1.5 1.5 is for the fire suppression is for the 1.5 ip is for those all services system which are related to the life safety and these includes your fire fighting system smoke management this all all like uh, services which could be hazardous for the human life safety and the other which is ip 1.0 which is for all uh, non life safety equipments like uh, the hvac which is like air conditioning uh, like plumbing so these are the comes un under this uh, category of 1.0 so now this is nature of occupancy as per the ibc it is categorized from 1 to 4 and uh, let's say this uh, it's one represent the which one represent the those buildings which have very low hazard to human life like small buildings g plus 1 or some agriculture facilities or small house but the other one it's if they have just written here from 1 3 and 4 but it has some like in between 1 uh, and 
then we have building another structure which represent like uh, substantial hazard to human life like school assembly halls water treatment facilities or any other the how we categorize this three it's a uh, occupant capacity is greater than 5000 so this is a like main criteria which we can like uh, categorize or differentiate any any occupancy category while we are confusing or while we have some issues to like uh, find out the same exact name of our occupancy category then hospitals fire rescue ambulance and police station emergency and the power plant aviation control these all are come under the category of four which is more severe and those severe needs to be for seismic point of view structure is more severe then we need to use more uh, like uh, design the system for seismic this is says based on this soil parameters based on site coefficient soil profile type it has some values based on this computation we have some uh, values in terms of g and and this by using single line interpolation method we can get here the based on occupancy category and based on sds value we can get the seismic design category which category it is there are basically a b c d categories and d is the most severe and the c is like less severe but it is considering for the life safety services a and b it has nothing for the seismic it's totally exempt from the seismic in terms of design category because we have lot of uh, like uh, in seismic we have lot of a b c d's so in design category it has own abcds and then soil profile type it has it is different so seismic design in in terms of uh, seismic design category and in terms of importance factor 1.0 and 1.5 let's say we have seismic design category based on some computation uh, on profile parameters and the other parameters we have some values for seismic design category and seismic design category we have got c so if seismic design category is c so seismic is seismic treatment is exempt from those equipments which are importance factor 1.0 like non life safety and it is required only for the life safety which is 1.5 if seismic design category is d then it is required for both 1.5 and 1.0 and 1.5 as same is follow for the e and f but mostly the we we are not in the region which is that kind of severe as e and f so our the major is the like uh, like most probably is for d in the worst cases so while we, we were discussing before based on seismic design category and life safety services and non life safety services now here we are discussing about by adding one more item which is pipe sizes means you are dealing with firefighting pipes you are dealing with uh, some pipes and then both like uh, life safety and non life safety if you have seismic design category c and your pipe size is 65 mm then it could be exempt from 1.0 and it's required for only for the uh, life safety then d e and f 1.0 and 1.5 both required for the same size as the same 78 required for uh, 73 3 inch pipe 1.0 is exempt 1.5 is required in in site category design category c but in design category D and F, it is required for 1.0 and 1.5, both for these sizes. So if the smaller size is required, then obviously the higher sizes shall be involved. So this is the like concept to uh, categorize the pipe sizes or to differentiate seismic requirements based on the seismic design categories. <coughs> so we have some method to calculate uh, the seismic design force as per american society of civil engineering and this seismic design force has some like uh, formula or method to calculate the seismic force sds as you all know right the based on soil parameters and the profile type we can calculate and then ap is amplification factor on based on different uh, different equipments and uh, ip is the importance factor rp is the response modification factor for each equipment is different as per the different tables from h standards then z over h z is the height point of attachment to the structure then h is the overall height and wp is your component operating weight which should be dynamic weight so this is the like method for to you know, to calculate the seismic forces so this seismic forces we have calculated here for this is journal seismic force now we have upper and lower limits to like uh, 
to counter check our values so this force is not to be greater than this this 1.6 and this this fact this equation and it this force must must be at least 0.3 this this equation the th second one our fp value is coming lesser than this the the force this less than this for 0.3 sds ipwp in that case we need to consider the force which are which is coming from this equation so that is the reason it should be at least the force should be must be at least uh, by this uh, follow this equation it is this your vertical component must be designed for uh, vertical in like uh, based on these loads and it has this factor 20 percent of your sds and wp so now these are the design methodologies which we supposed to discuss now we have some application examples which i can like uh, make it more simple to explain you how we can use these all parameters to design any system let's say we have one school and this school having this uh, kind like a school is come under this risk category three and nature of occupancy is three for these schools then we have let's say we have pipe 400 mm diameter which is firefighting pipe let's go again to this table and then this table shows you this if seismic design category is d a e and f and seismic design category c what is the requirement then there is the requirement is required ip is required in all means by all cases it's required so now we have <coughs> some calculation for this pipe along with the other sizes as well let's say we have this by using this equation by using this force we have computed this sds this as based on soil parameters we have computed sds and sd1 and then based on this formula or this equation we have computed seismic force at an at certain angles because y shall be applied at some angles we cannot consider the vertical force for, for wire application or any application for bracing angles needs to be considered and then again the same formulas for maximum and minimum need to follow the minimum and then vertical should be designed again the same thing for the first transfers then longitudinal it has the difference of a span and uh, different spans we are using for both as per the standard transfers span is different should be different from the longitudinal until unless it is so four way sway brace and then here we have some like uh, pipe, uh, pipe weight fact of safety and uh, anchor design shall be 1.3 times of the fp here we have some like uh, markup sample of the project where we used to submit like where like how we used to work and these are the, as you can see here it's uh, like uh, different mark markup is are available for the different transfers and longitudinal supports so it's it's a part of our design system because you cannot install without these markup drawings and that markup drawing needs to be designed by a specialist and by the supplier or the who's do, uh, designing the system and here are here we have some few typical details for equipment piping if we have different like we have different like uh, installation method piping this connecting to the clamp on the right side and the left side it's uh, wrapping around the pipe here we have some installation pictures <coughs> this is for the left one thus this for transfers and this right top one is this uh, longitudinal brace so these are the kind of bracing which we used to done on site for our seismic inst system installation we have wires which is really easy to fix and these wires are ulicces listed and complying with all national fire protection authorities and the system is designed according to ibc and ubc based on the requirement and specification and this uh, wire has its own strength and it's uh, categorized by different colors to represent different load carrying capacity and these are the pre-stretch aircraft cables not the normal steel wires that needs to be uh, considered in any while consider while choosing a wire because normally we cannot choose the normal wire for this application because those pre-stretch and normal wires having different behaviors in different application we have gripper system which has ball bearing mechanism inside and then it could be pulled from the trigger then this uh, you can insert the wire and take the wire from the other side and make a loop 
and it's very easy to install no any swaging method required normally for the if we are using crimping sleeves then in that case we have to use the uh, crimping sleeves swaging tool to compress or to punch the sleeves to make the to loop to make a loop and it's also it has different standards it has different it's, it's very it's tested for this application and it's like a major concept is to eliminate the swaging process, which is the complicated in on the side during installation. And we have bracket system, which is very simple to install. Products are very simple to install in Seismic, but the complications or the assessment design is the most important part before doing any installation. Here we have some bridget installation for the Seismic Bracing system. Then we have this uh, accessories which we are using to to design any rigid bracing system and for the because we were discussing about the flow the ceiling suspended services equipments now the thing is floor uh, mounted equipments needs to be in the account for seismic assessment so we have anti-seismic vibration isolators this is the this picture is showing one of our project which having this generator and generator is we are using anti seismic vibration isolator to avoid any uplift force by applying seismic anchors as well so this vibration isolator covering both uh, features isolate the equipment vibration as well as uh, to avoid the uplift force because of the earthquake we have seismically certified anchors which could be which which is the part of our system and uh, Whenever, wherever we have seismic requirements we are using we are recommending these anchors which is certified for seismic application c1 c2 categories thank you so much so i'm looking forward for your questions so then we can continue this discussion Thank you, Haris. Uh, we have some questions actually. So I will um, I will read some of the questions, but um, I'll ask the attendants if you have any questions to just uh, ask them now, so we we can get to all of them. Um, the first question is from uh, Mr. Darmesh Joshi, and uh, he's asking if anchors should anchors be seismically designed along with support system. yes uh, thank you for your question and this this anchor obviously anchor should be designed for any seismic application and anchor should be certified by if you are using in any seismic support installation another question again from mr darmesh joshi that's asking if the flexible bracing system has fm approval we have UL listed products for uh, seismic bracing system and that is designed for and is complying also this uh, NFPA 13 and ICCES listed as well. Thanks, uh, Haris. Any more questions? Uh, we have we have some some of the attendees asking for the slides after the presentation. We're gonna re, we're gonna upload a recording of this presentation to our uh, social media pages so you just just check it out okay um let me check okay um, i have a question of how to incorporate because now the questions are putting in how to incorporate the zone of influence on the design Actually, there are different met methods to consider while we are designing. We have to be used to consider the zone of influence where the majority of the pipe having the more forces and affecting for those pipes which are which having low loads. So zone of influence are the part of our design while we are designing any seismic bracing system. There is another question here. Um, Mr. Samir Soliman, uh, correct me if I read your name wrong, but he's asking uh, the bracing inclination angle shall be 60 degrees instead of 45 degrees to get the worst case. Uh, 
Can you comment on this? What should be the best angle or at what angles can be considered for uh, for the system, Harris? Yeah, angles uh, angles is manageable and it's like based on different because wire has its own load carrying capacities while you are using wires and uh, based on different uh, angles, it has different loads. So wire can be applicable at any angle and based on that angular force, we can use different models of wires to like control that load. There's a good question here for uh, Mr. Halil Aras. Um, Mr. Halil is asking, what about the branch lines in firefighting service? Are, is there any certain length for this branch to be seismically restrained? What do the, the standards call for that, Halil? Branch line also have the same like standards and this for the span point of view, transfers and longitudinal spans shall be followed the same uh, in case of any branch or main line. But uh, again, the thing is, while we are handling this uh, branch lines, we need to counter check the zone of influence. It's affecting on the other like other ends. While so, this is the part of our design while we are doing this assessment. Mr. Mohammed Yahia is asking how to choose anti-vibration isolators, so iso vibration isolators for reciprocating machines. So I, I'm assuming this is for uh, seismic events as well yeah uh, anti seismic vibration isolator like based on the load requirements and different rpms of the like uh, of the equipment so based on different equipment rpm this asher has some recommendation to use which kind of isolator so if it is for the higher rpms like majority is using or is major like major recommendation is for uh, spring mounts. So spring mounts, anti-seismic spring mounts shall be used in case of seismic uh, restraint system considering consideration. If it is normal vibration isolator, then normal vibration spring isolator shall be used. Sorry, uh, Mr. Sumit Pereira is asking, can we purchase this product in Sri Lanka? I can go ahead and answer this one. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you can. I'll, uh, I'll actually try to put you in touch with our uh, Sri Lanka team. We have a team over there, so they can assist you locally on, uh, on your next project. What's the best solution for that? And then, of course, technically, we'll have full support from us, from them. Uh, we are all the same company, so don't worry about that. So I'll get you in touch with them. I'll ask them to get in touch with you as well, and uh, we'll proceed from that. Okay, so, um, Mr. Sekrishna, how to choose seismic design category? based on different soil parameters uh, site coefficient and uh, soil parameters based on those computation it has formula and then by using those formulas we have to like uh, we need to compute some values and that values uh, we need to like uh, in, by using single line interpolation method and uh, in the ashray table then this ASC table, then we can get easily this uh, seismic design category based on this computation value. Sorry, uh, Sunit is asking at what distance should be the first support for risers? Could it should be installed before, like from the end of the pipe, it should be installed zero point less than like uh, not more than zero point six meter from the end of the pipe. Another question from uh, Sai Krishna. Is seismic bracing required for floor mounted pipes in terrace, so in rooftops? Yes, uh, obviously it's required and while using this floor mounted seismic uh, anchors, seismic certified anchors shall be recommended. Thanks, um, if anyone has another question or something else that you can immediately answer, please go ahead and post them up. If you don't have anything to remember right now, you can uh, get in touch with us as well, no problem. Just wait a couple of minutes to see if there are more, more questions coming in. Okay, all, I believe that is all. Um, Thank you all for attending our webinar.
we uh, we are very happy to see all of all of you present today. Please stay tuned Please stay to, to our, our social, social media pages, pages because we are going to plan a lot more events like this. We hope that you we hope that you'll that you like this session and that, that that was a very informative session for you. Thank you so much, all, for attending this webinar. If any clarification or any needs to be uh, clarified, just just let us know. We'll just show you the last slide, uh, and that shows our contacts as well. All right, so here you can uh, you can see uh, there's my email, there's Hadi's email, so you can get in touch with us. If you are uh, in the zone, you can also give a call. So wherever it's the most preferred method for reaching out to us, just go ahead. If you have any more doubts, we're going to upload this recording to our social media pages. Just check it out if you have any, any more doubts. And if you remember any questions, just send an email to us or give us a call or any method that you prefer, and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much for attending.